Hello viewers, welcome again to Top Notch Online TV. With you is teacher Emis Njabani, a teacher of English and Literature, an examiner as well as an author. In our previous session, we looked at an introduction as well as the plot analysis of the story Incident in the Park by Minja Mwangi. Uh, that's a continuation of the episodes we have been doing of the short stories from the uh, A Silent Song and Short Stories Anthology. This session, we are going to look at uh, the themes or the issues that come up in that story, as well as one of the essay questions from the best revision book we have here on Top Notch Online TV, English uh, Guru. So um, we have quite a number of uh, themes that come up in that story. And the main theme is uh, struggles or problems of urbanization. What are the challenges that people face also live in urban areas that are brought out in this story. So Minja Mwangi uh, uses the story to show us that people struggle a lot in the urban areas and uh, one of uh, the struggles that people face is lack of employment. So unemployment is one of the struggles that people face and this is brought out by the idlers sitting in the park. They would sit there all day up to evening, even with the clock, trying to urge them to stand up and do something constructive, they would just question the clock and ask themselves, where to? Where are we going to? What are we going to do? Because there are no jobs to do. There is nothing to do. So they just uh, lie on the grass the whole day with nothing to do until evening for them to go back to their houses. The second one is uh, the issue of overpopulation. We are told that the park or the city was overpopulated. And the only way that they were able to keep the population of the city from the uh, serene or the salinity of Uru Park is by use of Uru Aiwi, which was a busy Aiwi full of traffic. So it separated the two lives. They were like two different lives. But still, the park was also overpopulated, especially during lunch hour. Some people will not even afford a basic meal. So they just go to Uru Park, sit down and wait until the lunch hour is over. Others will just go buy cheap soggy chips uh, and still go back to the park to eat them under the shrubs. The other one is negligence from the government. The government does not take care of its people. The government does not take care of the resources that we have in the country, especially you can see the condition of the park. Look at the ponds in the park. The fish pond is neglected. Where there used to be beautiful flowers, now it is enclosed by these. They are actually calling them like uh, bastard flowers, as in flowers, wild flowers that are not supposed to be in the uh, fish, for, fish pond. So uh, it's like the encroaching and suffocating the fish. No one even feeds the fish. The fish are angry. And uh, you look at the loafer trying to fish them, the debris that is lying all over. And uh, the fish are so angry that they even jump in to go eat it, only to discover that it's not something edible. And the person feeding them is just, just so seated there hungry and with no food. Uh, we are told the park also is like a desert because of the drought. No one even tries to take care of it. Uh, the grounds are bare. There is no grass planted on it, nothing. So it has been neglected. Another uh, problem faced in the urbanization is the evil of corruption. When the fruit seller is accosted by the um, city constables, the first thing he does upon realizing that he doesn't have an ID and he also doesn't have a license is bribe the city constables. And from their body language, we can tell that they are used to taking bribes. The reason why they did not take the money from the food seller is because it was too little. They, it was too little for them to take it. it we could tell that actually from their body language. So corruption is also rampant in the city and the poor suffer because they have to bribe their way out of any problem or any challenge they find themselves uh, in. The other one is struggle for survival. In this city, you have to struggle to survive, especially those people of the lower cadre. Look at, for example, the ministerial uh, office workers. Uh, they couldn't even afford busy car. Okay, good food. 
every time the clock struck one, it's like the floodgates have been opened and they would just stream down the hill all the way to the city center looking for cheap food and looking for cheap nyamachoma along uh, river road. That's the first theme that we have problems of urbanization. The second we have, although I have mentioned it as a problem, it's also a theme on its own struggle for survival. And uh, in our earlier episode, our viewers, we looked at struggle for survival as an episode. We looked at struggle for survival as an episode and we looked at three different classes of people that helped to develop that theme in that story. The first one is the Ocas or the small scale business people that is brought out by uh, the fruit seller and the ice cream uh, men. They cannot even afford a simple license to run their businesses. The fruit seller has a pending case and the pending case is because he was arrested for conducting business without a license. Here he is again, he has been arrested. He has not even um, paid fine for the first court case. And he's trying to sell again without a license so that he can raise money to pay for the fine. So uh, this person is struggling to survive because he has to meet uh, the needs for his family. He has to meet his own basic needs. So he's struggling and uh, he's fighting with the constables because he has uh, to make the uh, ends meet. Uh, look at the, for example, the second ice cream man. He has not sold even a single bar of ice cream for three days. Yet he comes to the park every morning. He rings his bell. Uh, even the loafer or the idler who was, fishing, who was uh, uh, feeding the fish describes him as a crazy person. He thinks that he is insane. You can't ring the bell from morning to evening and no one even looks at your direction and you're still not giving up. So he's struggling to survive. He hopes that, yeah, I did not sell yesterday, but today might be a different day altogether. He even tries to block the only route to the highway so that the ministerial work, workers can actually buy even if it's a bar or two. Uh, from him. So that's another person who is uh, scrambling to survive. Now, another thing is the symbol, the symbolism of the fish. Just like I said in our previous episode, that the fish are symbolic. They symbolize uh, the, the cadres, the different cadres we have in our society. There are people who live uh, in the lower cadre or the, the lower class, um, social class, and those are the small fish. And then there are people who live on the upper cadre or those that live in the, uh, the top social class, and that's the big fish. If we have an opportunity in our country, then that opportunity most likely goes to the, uh, to the big fish. And the big fish is the who is who in the country. And the small fish are left again with nothing. So they scramble, the way the, the fish scramble for the debris thrown into the pond by the uh, air loafer is the same way human beings, especially those in the lower Kanda, scramble for the opportunities in the country. And those opportunities are very rare. Those opportunities are very scarce. Now that take, takes us to our third and the last theme, uh, the theme of poverty. The theme of poverty is clearly brought out in this short story, Incident in the Park. Uh, there is no food for most people. Uh, the air loafer, he, he sits there talking to the stranger and his stomach uh, is, it's like clearly he's hungry. His stomach is rumbling and he bolos a cigarette. Your stomach is rumbling because of hunger. But the only thing you can borrow from someone closer to you, because this other person is also an handler, probably unemployed just like you, is a piece of cigarette or a puff of cigarette. And when he gets one, he's so excited that at least he has something to put in his mouth. Also, poverty is brought out by the people who work in the ministerial offices. They can't even afford to buy food in their in, in near their offices because food is very expensive. They have to run all the way down to River Road so that they can uh, get the soggy chips, uh, the watered down ketchup, as well as uh, Nyamachoma from River Road. Uh, there is no food for fish as well. We are told that the fish is also hungry and uh, they try to scramble for the debris that is thrown into their, fo uh, okay, into their, their fish pond by the early loafer. So our learners, those are the themes that we have, the main themes that we have in that story, three themes, 
problems of urbanization, struggle for survival, as well as poverty. Our viewers, you have two other themes, minor themes, that you can look into during your own free time. The first one is social stratification, and the other one is social injustice. That is clearly explained in our last episode. If you check our uh, our 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 session one of this story, we talked about the episodic approach. Our last episode was on mob justice. That episode clearly brings out that other theme on social injustice. That's what we have for the themes. Now, I am going to look at one of the essays that we have in the book that I talked about. This is the book, English Guru, Top Notch English Guru. And you're going to look at one of the essays. Remember our learners that these short stories are tested in paper three as an essay question. So I'll just take you through a sample essay question. What kind of an essay can come from this story? And how would you approach that kind of an essay? So the essay we have is on page 345 of Top Notch English Guru. You can get your own copy. Just call the number that is provided by the Top Notch Online TV and press the subscribe button. So the uh, essay is on page 345 and it reads, life in urban areas is full of challenges for, for most people. Life in urban areas is full of challenges for most people. Support this claim by drawing clear illustrations from Menja Mwangi's incident in the park. Again, just for a second, I will remind you the parts of an essay. An essay must have an introduction. An essay must have a body. And an essay must have a conclusion. Uh, we had an entire session on how to answer essay questions. Please go back and check uh, the basics or the best way to approach an essay question. So the introduction we have here is a general introduction a general introduction and it leads in an overpopulated city life has both its ups and downs the poor suffer most as they try to make ends meet in a jungle where opportunities are limited why am i saying it is a general introduction it is because it does not touch on the book so it is not contextualized to the story it is just talking about life in our society so this is a general approach to introduction which is still okay if you take uh, the contextualized contextualized introduction it's still okay just check our episode on how to answer essay questions and see the three kinds of introductions that we talked about again just as a reminder remember not to repeat the keywords that are in the question in your introduction your introduction should show the examiner how you have understood the question. And by repeating the keywords in the question, that does not tell uh, your interpretation of the question, but rather that is just you restating the question and you'll never score that for the introduction. Our first point is the body. The body, again, has four points, each point on its own paragraph. So the first point we have is, uh, remember we are looking at challenges, uh, in what? Urbanization. Our first theme that we discussed today, struggles or no, challenges faced in urbanization. Uh, areas, urban areas are full of challenges. It's the same essay we are trying to uh, expound relating to that uh, theme. So the first point we have is most people living in urban areas suffer as a result of unemployment. That was actually our first point. The population growth in the urban areas like Nairobi is what has largely contributed to lack of employment in the park. So what I've read, the topic sentence is first, most people living in urban areas suffer as a result of unemployment. Remember the parts of every paragraph, the topic sentence, the supporting sentences, as well as the clincher. Now, the second sentence is the supporting sentences, which gives us a background in product uh, information about unemployment, which is our topic sentence. And that read, the population growth in the urban areas like Nairobi is what has largely contributed to lack of employment. So that is just background information. So now we have to be specific. Go to our story and give specific supporting sentences that support our 
topic sentence that people suffer as a result of lack of employment. Um, in the park, many city, de city dwellers lay idly with no job to do and nowhere to go. That is page seven. Others shook their hands defiantly at the insistent clock, cast them loudly and facing the other way, went back to sleep. Onlookers on the lake would watch the paddlers every day because they had no job to do and nowhere to go. Those are actually lines from the short story telling us that these people had no job to do, they are nowhere to go. So even when the uh, clock, uh, the clock insisted that they should stand up and do something, they would just turn on the other side and ignore the clock and continue sleeping somewhere under a shrub in the park. The second point to answer our question is, secondly, poverty is a great challenge for some city dwellers. So city dwellers suffer uh, as a result of lack of basic needs. As a result of unemployment, many cannot afford basic needs such as food. The orcas cannot afford licenses to operate their small businesses. The man feeding the fish has his stomach crumbling because of hunger and cannot afford to buy food or even a stick of cigarette. He borrows a cigarette from the stranger who stood next to him. The fruit seller cannot afford to pay for a license for his business and he also has no identity card which... Um, identity card which identified him and also his dressing uh, was a symbol of poverty. So those are specific illustrations or supporting sentences from the, uh, the short story that tells us that there were so many uh, instances in the story that portray that those were poor people. Those people lying on the grass in the park was poor people. Number three, urban dwellers suffer from social injustice. Social injustice is uh, as a result of mob justice. Uh, when the fruit seller was accosted by the city constables and they wanted to take him to jail, in an attempt to save himself from jail, what does he do? He tries to run away from them, but he is nabbed by the mob and they lynch on him and stone him to, think, to death thinking that he was uh, a thief. The crowd did not listen to his story before condemning him. As a result of social injustice, the fruit seller loses his life and his family is left to identify his body and mourn his death. So that tells us there is a lot of social injustice in the, in the streets, in urban areas. People don't take you to court. The moment they look at you, they judge you, and they see that you look like a thief, they take the law into their own hands and they punish you. And most of these actions lead to loss of lives. Our last point in the body, there is conflict between authorities and, and some city dwellers. That is brought out, of course, by the two city constables as well as uh, the fruit seller, uh, which leads to the death of the seller. I'll read the paragraph uh, to you. The, city, uh, the two city constables accost the ice cream seller and demand to see his license. They also accost the fruit seller and demand to see his license or identity card. They threaten to send him to court upon realizing that he had none. Clearly, it is not the first time he's accosted since he had a pending case in court. He even tries to bribe the constables and beg them to forgive him. He resolves to run in away. He here is the fruit seller. He resolves to run in away to save himself from the wrath of the judge. Unfortunately, this cost him his life. So that pulling back and forth between the city constables and uh, the fruit seller, we can see is conflict between the authorities and some city dwellers. Again, still conflict between the judge and the fruit seller. Remember, we said at the beginning that every essay must have a conclusion. And a conclusion should not be you restating the question. A conclusion can be a moral lesson. We have said this in every episode. We have an essay. It can be a moral lesson or it can just be you summarizing the points that you have discussed in the body without introducing a new point. Never introduce a new point in the conclusion. And your conclusion must be valid. If it's not valid, you will not score the two marks that the conclusion carries. So the conclusion we have here 
in conclusion, life in urban areas is not for the faint, faint hearted. It's like an advice or a moral lesson. One has to be strong and determined to succeed in an urban area. So what we have here is more uh, like a moral lesson or something we learn from these uh, points that are in the body of this essay question. So uh, that marks our end of our session today, our viewers. But do not forget to subscribe. Press that subscribe button for more education contents. Again, do not forget to get a copy of this top notch online English guru for that A in English. Until next time, have a good day.